Hi, my name's Scott Hebbard from Spark Systems, and today I'll show how Enterprise Architect executes the operation of a cafe. We've modelled our cafe using a state machine, which is often used to build event-driven systems, model business processes, and verify system behaviour. The model on screen describes the sequence of events that occur when a customer orders a meal at a cafe. The solid circle at the top of the model represents the initial state, while the arrows represent a transition from one state to the next. The rounded rectangles represent all of the states within our system, such as entering, ordering and eating. The two final states signify where our model ends. Looking at our model, the customer enters the cafe and requests a menu. This event triggers a change in state. Once the menu has been requested, the customer is then left to decide on the most appropriate meal. The text on the transition, such as menu requested and inadequate selection, are referred to as triggers. A trigger can represent a signal or an event. Examples of a trigger include a button being pushed, a switch being flicked, or a menu being requested. Triggers can be used to control the execution of your model, allowing you to select the most appropriate path during a model simulation. I shall now demonstrate how to create an additional trigger from scratch. I begin by double clicking the empty transition at the bottom of the diagram. Next to the trigger name, I can press this ellipse, which allows me to select an appropriate location to save my triggers. Once I have selected an appropriate package, I can click the Add New button. This allows me to create a new element of type Trigger. I'm going to call this element Finished Eating. You can see that the trigger now appears on our diagram. The system will only transition to the final state if the finished eating trigger has been fired. Returning to our model, once the menu has been requested, the customer can then decide on their meal, place an order, wait for the meal to be delivered, and finally eat their meal. Upon eating their food, they are free to leave the cafe or order from the desserts and drinks menu. According to our state machine, there are a number of reasons why a customer may leave the cafe unsatisfied. This includes an inadequate selection on the menu and the customer having to wait too long for their meal. This information can be analysed to improve the operation of a cafe and ensure that customers do not leave the cafe unsatisfied. Now that we have reviewed our cafe model, we can bring this model to life using simulation. To perform a model simulation, I've selected an appropriate workspace layout containing all the tools required for simulation and model analysis. This includes the ability to insert simulation breakpoints, the ability to fire waiting triggers, tools to pause and run my simulation and tools to examine local variables and the call stack. Model simulation is a powerful communication tool that can be used to predict system performance, identify bottlenecks, eliminate redundancies, reduce risk and better understand decision making to help improve model outcomes. To simulate our model, I simply right click on the diagram and select Execute Simulation followed by Interpreted. In our simulation window you can see that it configures and prepares the simulation and it indicates the current state. The current state is also identified in the call stack and by the node being highlighted here. You can see that there is a single waiting trigger available on screen. Enterprise Architect halts execution at the first state entitled Entering. The Waiting Triggers list on the Simulation Events tab is populated on each simulation cycle. There is a single waiting trigger entitled Menu Requested. 
The simulation is blocked until a trigger is fired. There are a number of different techniques that can be used to fire a trigger, which I shall demonstrate now. I can select a transition and then use the context menu to either cue the trigger or signal the trigger directly. You can see that the simulation has now moved on to the next state. Alternatively, in order to fire a waiting trigger, I can simply double click. You'll notice here that there is no trigger between the states ordering and waiting. Therefore, Enterprise Architect just continues on to the next state. Whenever I fire a trigger, it is automatically saved to this list. It keeps track of the sequence, the trigger, the status, the type and any parameters. I can then save this trigger set so it can be used at a later date. I shall now demonstrate and automatically run the simulation using the existing set. In this video we have shown how simulation can help you better understand how a process works. We have used a state machine to learn how to create a trigger from scratch and use triggers to control the execution of a simulation. For more information on simulation or to download a free trial of Enterprise Architect, please visit www.sparksystems.com.